I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to the Bigfoot Project. Rattlesnake Ridge is a mountain ridge located south of North Bend, Washington. It rises from the intersection of State Route 18 and I-90 and runs southeast about 7 air miles or 11 trail miles. At 3,517 feet in elevation, it is the highest and easternmost of the Issaquah Alps. A complicated maze of abandoned logging roads and constructed trails have been strung together to provide a footpath from the Snoqualmie Point Trailhead at Exit 27 on I-90 all the way to the Rattlesnake Lake Trailhead near Exit 32. In the month of July 1998, my friend Jesse and I went on a hiking trip at Rattlesnake Ridge to collect rocks for Jesse's geology class at Seattle University. We reached the gravel parking lot at around 1,300 hours. At the beginning of the trailhead, there's a lake that is very active with waterfowl and occasional birds of prey. Normally, this trailhead is semi-popular, and we noticed there were only three other cars in the lot at the time. Looking back now, I can say that this particular day was odd in what we noticed. No animal or bird activity, which normally is abundant around the lake at the trailhead. Everything was strangely quiet, and an ominous feeling seemed to loom everywhere. In fact, normally both Jesse and myself were quite talkative when we hike, and even we said very little to one another. Both of us packed lunch in our backpacks, along with our usual flashlights, waterproof matches, extra batteries, two walkie-talkies, one cell phone, and one first aid kit. I was armed with my knife that is attached to my rucksack on the shoulder strap, as well as an H&K millimeter pistol, which I keep in my fanny pack. We started our hike on the regular trailhead until we reached the opposite side of the lake. At this point, we exited the regular trail and began ascending up the mountain, moving diagonally toward the rock face of the mountain ridge. After approximately 20 minutes, we came upon a small creek that flowed downhill toward the lake. We decided to follow the creek upward as it seemed to be going in the direction of our destination. We followed the stream for approximately another 15 minutes until we ran across an animal trail that also was going in the direction we were heading. However, the animal trail was moving diagonally and had fewer obstructions in our path, both of which made it easier to move up the mountain. Other than our own heavy breathing, we could hear nothing, and we said nothing as we continued our ascent. We continued on for what seemed like only 10 minutes when we began to hear a loud slurping sound ahead of us. We both looked at one another with a what-the-heck type of expression on our faces while continuing upward. The slurping grew louder, and we now could hear what sounded like a sigh in between each slurp. At this junction, the creek hooked around behind a hill in front of us and out of sight. Our trail would intersect with the creek once again just over the hill. At this time in the hike, Jesse was ahead of me by approximately 8 to 10 feet. Suddenly, we came over this hill... Jesse froze in his steps, and I came up behind him, alerted by his actions. As I approached him from his six, I looked over his shoulder and also saw what he was looking at. In front of us, and only 20 feet from our position, I saw what I first thought was a huge bear drinking from the creek. As my brain tried to categorize the animal I was looking at, I suddenly realized that directly under its glutes was a huge pair of feet. Not hooves or paws, but actual feet each having five toes. The feet were a dusty gray color with the same texture of a bottom of a dog's paw. As it knelt down, the glutes were as large as a Clydesdale's butt. And I'm not kidding. With the exception of the soles of its feet, this creature was covered in four to five inches in length, dark brown, almost black hair. Its hair on its butt was all matted, and it looked like he had sat in a few wet cow pies. Under his butt, I could clearly see his testicles, and I knew it was a male. We stood there frozen. I could only feel my legs and skin crawl from the adrenaline running through my body. I remember my mouth going dry and feeling numb all over my face and mouth. The smell of the animal was indescribable. It was absolutely horrible, and I could feel my gag reflexes twitching as I badly wanted to vomit. Jesse's face was beet red and his eyes were watering as his hand was over his mouth, also trying to hold back the noxious feeling we had. He then tried to back up, pushing me back also. 
We both tried to regain our balance while still keeping our eyes on the thing. It must have heard us moving because suddenly, in one quick motion, it jumped to its feet and spun around facing us in a defensive posture. As it did this, it made a loud bark type of sound that seemed to make the trees shake. It stood there with its fists clenched and its arms raised in front like a boxer. Its lips were curled, bearing these huge horse teeth as it glared directly at us and breathed heavy. The bottom half of his face was dripping with creek water and his eyes were black like a shark's eyes. I stood there out of fear and amazement of this animal's sheer size and agility. I'm six foot two and I only came up to his midsection. I can only guess that this animal was between 10 and 12 feet in height. It was much higher than a basketball rim and towered over us like we were children. I remember briefly thinking of grabbing my weapon, but even if I was able to empty my whole clip into him, he was still close enough to have been able to get us before he was neutralized. Therefore, all three of us just stood there for a good minute or so and studied one another. I was absolutely in amazement at the incredible size of this creature. I remember every detail clearly as if it were yesterday, and I will attempt to describe the proportions of this creature the way I'd seen it. First of all, the feet on this creature were massive and were approximately 20 or more inches in length. The toenails and fingernails were dark colored with an orange tint to them. The creature did not have one ounce of fat on its entire body, and I could see the vascularity of every muscle that seemed like they would have striated if it weren't for the hair that covered them. The calves were twice the size of my head, and its quads were as big as a tree trunk's and swept out like a bodybuilder's. I'm not kidding, those legs looked like they could squat a full-size Dodge pickup truck. The glutes were huge and muscular and very high like a track runner's. They tied into these enormous hamstrings that gave the animal a very explosive look, like it could sprint at very high speeds. The waist was narrow and very powerful and solid looking. Above that, I could see these huge lats that flared out under its arms. His pectorals were wide and bulky looking. They were so big that they came up to his chin. I couldn't see any neck at all, but his traps and deltoids were what really caught my attention. First of all, the delts were as big as beach balls, and connected to them were these huge traps that flared out and upward. They went from his deltoids to its ears. The top of his head was conical, and these bulky muscles streamed down from the tip of his cranium to his traps, kind of like the back of a gorilla's neck. Now, the face was not an ape at all. It looked really like a Neanderthal in all the facial features. The face had less hair than the rest of its body. All except for those thick eyebrows that pointed upward, he had no hair around his eyes or his nose. The forehead was sloped and the eyebrow ridges protruded out and under them were these deep eye sockets that sank deep into its skull. The cheekbones were very high and wide and below them was this powerful deep looking jawline. The nose had a ridge to it, like a human nose, and the nostrils flared out and forward. They weren't pointed down like a human nostril would be. When his lips relaxed a bit, I could see that he really didn't have any upper lip at all. It was very thin, and his bottom lip was very large. The mouth all over was very wide, as was his face. His arms were huge and bulky, and you could see his triceps bulging out, and his biceps looked like bowling balls. His forearms were abnormally long, and they too were bulging with muscles. His knuckles were huge, and the color of his skin was a cross between a black and a gray. Believe me, trying to describe this creature doesn't even begin to do it justice. I wish I could somehow download this picture from my brain and put it on a screen to show you his enormous proportions. In 1993, I shot a 1,200-pound bull elk near Yakima. The creature we saw that day had twice the muscle mass as my elk did, and I guarantee you he weighed no less than 1,500 pounds, with a maximum weight of 2,500 pounds easily. Finally, we had enough and the urge to leave grew stronger. We began backing down the trail, keeping our eyes glued on the creature the entire time, except to look where we were going periodically. As we backed away, his arms dropped to his side and he opened his mouth, and let out a soft, deep, bellowing sound, kind of like the gurgling moan sound like a male lion does to declare his territory. 
Long after he was out of sight, we could hear this bellowing as we began a rapid descent down the mountain. When we reached the opening at the bottom near the lake, we opened up into a full sprint all the way to the car. We drove all the way to Bellevue, Washington, before we stopped for coffee to try and collect our thoughts. We don't know how to begin to tell anyone what we just seen. I don't think I would have believed our own story if I hadn't seen it for myself. I do feel better getting this off my chest. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on the Bigfoot Project. If you have a story you would like to share here, you can email me, Lynn Smith, at thebigfootproject at mail.com. Thanks. I hope to hear from you soon.